everyone. This is uh, Nitin Ramachandra from the NR Hour Sports Show. This is episode 884, alongside with one of our co-hosts, Davion Anderson from Sports Talk. Davion, nine-year-old superstar Hooper slash reporter, and I'm joined by we're joined by a really special guest. His name is Jay Alford. He's a Super Bowl champ from the New York Giants. He's What's a former up, yeah, he's a former defensive tackle. He went to college for Penn State. He's from uh, Orange, New Jersey. Uh, he, not only he played for the Giants, he played for the Raiders, Seahawks, Virginia Destroyers. Uh, not, he was a two, two-time two All-Big Ten, uh, so obviously Super Bowl champ, I said before. But first of all, Jay, I just want to say thank you for joining the show. And uh, now, I, obviously, you coach the D-line. You're a coach now. We're going to get to all of that. But first of all, how are you and your family doing? And thanks for joining. I mean, I'm, I'm good. Uh, still working remotely. So, uh, I mean, that's always a plus. Um, it's, you know, I'm having a good time, but family's good. Everybody's good. Yeah, just having a good time. Yeah. So, uh, David, you want to start off here first? Yep. What you got for me? How old, Ani, how old were you when you started playing sports? I mean, first started playing sports. Okay. So, let's see. I was, okay, I was nine when I started playing baseball. Baseball was my first sport that I ever started to play. Um, I didn't start playing football until I was 12. So I think that was, yeah, so it was nine. And then, so I played baseball at nine. I played basketball or I started playing at 10. And then 12 is when I started playing football. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. So I want to start off, start off, uh, grow, what was it like growing up in New Jersey, Orange, New Jersey? And uh, did, you, did, you, did you have any like role models growing up in football? Um, so, I mean, it was, uh, you know, it's the inner city. So, I mean, uh, it was, you know, I didn't see it as being tough, but I mean, if others looking in, you know, outside looking in, it was tough, but I mean, not for me, uh, I grew up with my grandmother. Uh, it was five of us. So it was me and, you know, four others and she raised us all. And, um, yeah, I mean, like it wasn't, you know, for me, it was just, you know, football and, and having fun. But I mean, like it was, it wasn't as bad as, you know, people think it is. Hmm. Uh, role, role model, uh, I think when I first started playing football, which is crazy because I wanted to play quarterback. Um, it wasn't until like later on, you know, in high school when uh, when I picked up, uh, well, not high school, I would say maybe like my second, second, second year is when I picked up like wanting to become a defense alignment. Hmm. But uh, when I first started playing, I, was, I always thought I was going to be a quarterback. So my role model then was Joe Montana. Uh, cause I thought he was just, you know, so cool behind the, you know, behind the center and just how he just kind of takes control of games. Uh, but then when I started playing D line, uh, I started, you know, to emulate Warren Sapp. Warren yeah. Sapp was, you know, my, I, I mean, everything he did, I wanted to do because I mean, I just thought he was just so, you no know, charismatic on the field. Like he was right. just so high energy. Uh, he was, a, he was like one of the only three techniques that I knew that wanted to get sacks. Like he was, you know, like he always wanted to get sacks. So, I mean, uh, yeah, so I started, you know, watching him a lot and emulate my game after him. Hey, there you go. That's a good player to learn from right there. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> How did it feel when you made your first sack in the NFL? Ooh, first sack in the NFL. Uh, I want to say my first sack in the NFL was against the Eagles. And it was, who was the quarterback for the Eagles? What was his name? Donovan McNabb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was Donovan McNabb, uh, first sack. And, you know, it was kind of shaky because it was one of those sacks where he was being chased out of bounds and I just got there first. So, I mean, I don't really count it as a sack, but it they on the books it was a sack. <laughs> um, I, was, I was happy, you know, because, I mean, you don't really – not a lot of people, one, get to get to the NFL. So then right. now to say – Oh, uh, I get sacks in the NFL. Oh, it was great. It was great. Hey, uh, I had him on the show too. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Uh, but uh, I, so I want to ask you, I'm just curious. Um, obviously, now you see a lot of great talent from Jersey coming from playing football. Uh, obviously, in Paulsboro High School, if you want to go North Jersey, you see a lot, a lot of great talent. So what's it like be, uh, being from Jersey, being a former football player, and seeing these – uh, young athletes coming from Jersey to get to the NFL where you were. Oh, I'm, I'm super excited about it because, I mean, like you said, Jersey's, you know, small state, you know. So to be able to bring so much talent and people wanting to recruit out of Jersey and then not only that, them making it to the league, uh, it just shows, you know, what type of football we got here. 
You know, a lot of people look at, you know, Texas and the Floridas, yeah. uh, but we have a lot of talent. So I'm just, I'm happy to see it. I'm happy to see it. Hmm. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. yeah. What was your favorite, uh, what was your favorite, What was your favorite as a hey? Hmm. What was your favorite food as a kid st favorite that you food? still like now? Favorite food as a kid. See, now I when I was a kid, I'm not I wasn't as, you know, strict on my diet as I am now. So I would say, you know, my grandmother, she makes a mean lasagna. Hmm. So I would, you know, if she made that every Sunday or every day, I would have been a happy boy. Uh, now, um, I would say sushi, maybe. Mm. I like sashimi a lot, you know. I don't get it too often, but um, when I do get it, yeah, I try to get as much as I can because wow. I do love sashimi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I want to ask you about your high school career, and obviously um, now in this, in this generation, uh, coaches love players that can play multiple positions, versatile players, and for you, before settling on defensive tackle, uh, did you get to play any other positions in high school? Okay. I, so not not on the well, I would say on a varsity, varsity level, my coach, you know, uh, in certain packages I would play, you know, but it wasn't like a permanent thing. Um, I lined up at tight end a few times, did a little running back, but before varsity, uh, when I was playing, so my freshman year I didn't play uh, varsity, I played JV, and um, freshman and JV, those two, like I played quarterback, I played uh, kicker. Wow. Long snapper. <laughs> uh, hold on. I played. Uh, what else did I do? Man. Defensive end. Uh, what else? Fullback? No, no, no. That was it. So I think those those four or five positions I played. Can you still sling it as a quarterback? I can, but not as not as far as I could when I was younger. I mean, like my shoulders, they wow. hurt now. Like it's the older you get, you know, your your joints don't work as hard. But I mean, like when I was when I was really playing my younger years, I could get it about 60, 65. Okay. Like I was, yeah, I was slinging it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Who were the teammates that motivated you when you were, when you had a bad day? Hmm. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would say Michael Strahan and O.C. Yuminura. So those two guys, you know, when, uh, you know, because they just, they've been in the leagues like so much longer, you know, uh, well, they, their experience is just more, you know, so they have more experience. So when I had a bad day, uh, they probably already went through this situation. So, you know, they would walk me through it, tell me how to get through it. Uh, you know, cause I mean, football is mostly when it comes to the NFL, it's mostly a mental game, right. you know? So if you can get out of your head and they could get, give you ways on how to do that, yeah, they those were my top two that I was that I would always go to. Man, Jay, I, this is a two part question, man. I, I I found out something interesting. You you were thirty minutes away from Giant Stadium when you were in high school, and uh, to ever and, and and did you ever think to yourself when you were in high school that you could possibly play for the New York Giants? And it, it really happened, and obviously it happened. Well, no, never. Like I like it was. I mean, I was, and you know what? I was probably closer than that. So probably I was probably about 20 minutes from the stadium. Wow. But um, yeah, I mean, growing up, like I, football was, I knew it would have been an outlet, but I didn't know I was going to be really good at football until, yeah. you know, my sophomore, maybe my sophomore year. Yeah, my sophomore year is when I kind of really turned it on. I mean, I always showed signs. Like I always, it was just like, you know, when I was playing uh, like Pop Warner, um, you know, I would show signs like, oh, but I just didn't know what I was doing. And in my head, it was just like, ah, I mean, am I going to be good enough to get there? So, I mean, I didn't look at it as, oh, well, uh, I'm just going to be this great football player because I didn't start off that way. Yeah. You know, I was always one of the guys that started from the bottom and just kind of worked my way to it, you know, because my mentality is just always just kind of, uh, it's one like one view. Like I see it and then that's what I go for. So I started from the bottom and I just gradually kept getting better. But I had to, you know, I had the gifts. But my, my, my mindset wasn't like, oh, well, yeah, he'll make it to the Giants one day. Like, I mean, once I got to, you know, um, to a space where it's like, oh, I'm good, then I started getting recruited by colleges. Right. And once I got to college 
And even then, like I start again, I started from the bottom and then worked my way up. Yeah. It wasn't until like my sophomore year, like I, I, I redshirted and then my redshirt freshman year. So yeah, maybe my redshirt uh, sophomore year, I was like, oh, I'm, I might have a shot, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the next, speaking of, uh, tell us, take us through your, uh, take us through your recruiting process and uh, what was it like? Um, obviously, you chose Penn State. How many more offers did you get? And wh wh what made you choose Penn State? Uh, so, okay. So, I think I want to say, uh, and I, I could be wrong, but it might have been like, it, it was either, it was like 40, 40 to 40, 40 to 50 schools that, you know, was on like a continuous, constant uh, getting in contact with me. Um, I narrowed it down to, I think I narrowed it down my junior, well, yeah, my junior year, I narrowed it down to, to five, um, went on and Miami was my top school. So oh, Miami, okay. because Warren Sapp went to, you know, yeah. Warren Sapp went to Miami. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm, that's where I'm going. You know, I wore 76 like Warren Sapp. I'm like, oh yeah, this is where I'm going. Um, they won the, they won the championship that year. I think it was 02, 02, 02 yeah, 02. O2, they won a championship and they their team was loaded. That's when they, you know, they had Shockey, yeah. they had uh, uh, Ed Reed, they had uh, all, right. <laughs> all of them boys, you know? So it was a loaded team. So uh, I think it was like the game might have been over like maybe like one o'clock in the morning, wow. something like that. It was, it was late, but I watched the whole thing. Uh, after the game, I was like, uh, Ma, I'm going to call my coach right now and tell him that I come, I'm coming. And um, she was like, hang up the phone, you're going to Penn State, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my decision process. Like she oh, told me like, oh, you're going to Penn State, go to bed. Wow. So she basically cho chose the school for me. But I mean, to her, I mean, it, it was a, Penn State was a great school. I love Penn State, you know? So I, like I said, that was my number two. But um, yeah, she, she ultimately chose it for me though. Wow, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I I like playing my career on Madden. Do you? Uh, how, how does it feel to be on on Madden, like the video? Uh, it, it's you know what, it was it was great, but you get too caught up on your rate your rankings or your ratings, and I think that you don't you, it takes the joy out of it because it's just like oh I'm I'm playing with myself on Madden, but you're like oh well why is my rating so low? Why can't they make me? I'm better than that, you know. So you start to kind of focus more on the ratings than you do actually on the actual game. But I mean, it's cool to play with yourself. But I mean, like you can make yourself a Madden now. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. Yeah, I love uh, I love the new changes they made to the game. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's crazy. I haven't played Madden since I since I've been in it. So I I mean, that was what my last my last season was 2012. So yeah, I. Since I've been in, I, I don't know what what man has going on. <laughs> yeah, so I want to ask you uh, before we before we get to your draft experience, what was it like playing for Penn State? Um, the the blue and wearing the white blue jersey and the helmets, and what was it like playing in front of those fans and being close to home? Still, I mean, you can't. Uh, I can't really put words on it how great that school was to me, and I mean the teams that we had, the teammates. You know, I best friends that I still have to this day. Um, I mean, but wearing that, that blue and white, you know, it's, it's the tradition that counts when it comes to Penn State. That was one of the reasons why my grandmother chose it. Um, but I mean, it, it was great because, I mean, also playing for Joe Paterno, yeah. uh, you know, he kind of molded me into the man that, you know, I ultimately became, you know, later on in life. So, I mean, uh, just playing, not only being on the field, off the field stuff, uh, like I said, with the coaches, the family atmosphere, uh, that whole, just the whole place was just a great, great situation for me. Oh, there you go. Oh. Was there any QB or team that, that were extra excited to play against? Ooh, yes. Mm -hmm. yes, it was. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was a few, but I think the top, the top two that I got to play against that, you know, I was just super excited for was Michael Vick and Brett Favre. Oh. Uh, yeah, so both of those guys, like, okay, so 
physically you want to play against Michael Vick or you don't like depending on, you know, <laughs> like it, because even, I mean, cause I, I got Michael Vick when he played, it was like towards the end of his career. So this okay. is when he was with the Jets. I'm on the, no, wasn't, oh, yeah, like he was with the Jets. Jets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But still as fast as I've ever, any quarterback I've ever seen as fast as that. So it was just like, I, I couldn't do anything with it, but it was still fun to just actually go out there and see the talent that he had. Like, it was just crazy how fast he had. I mean, you have like Lamar Jackson now, but you know, he was Lamar Jackson before Lamar Jackson got there. So playing against Vic was just, you know, uh, it was amazing. And Brett Favre, you know, with him just being so, you know, just a, a savvy vet, you know, and that arm that he had, like he had that arm mm -hmm. through his whole career. I'm pretty sure he could probably still throw it 70 yards if he wanted to. <laughs> But I mean, just to go out here and see him control the field as well was just kind of—it was amazing. Um, I'm, we're also going to talk about the, uh, some, the another quarterback that you played against. I'm sure you know who you I'm talking about. So we're yeah. going to yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, uh, I want to ask you to tell us about your draft experience. Uh, you got drafted in 07, round three, pick 81 by the New York Football Giants. And uh -huh. what was that like? The call, like getting the call from John Mara, the owner, and uh, and Tom Coughlin, the coach. So the whole the whole experience for me was just kind of you you go through every emotion. Uh, I mean, you're you're happy, you're sad, you're you're nervous, you're you you go through every every one of them, you know. So I mean, all the way up until the draft, like just uh, like you know, you get your working out phase, you get the combine stuff like that, and then now you get all of the media, and it's like, oh well, you got a first or second round grade, and you know, me going into that. I was just like, oh, well, I got a first and second round grade. I could do yeah. that, you know? And then and now I'm super excited because it's like, oh, it's first, second round. Like, come on, are you kidding me? Like, who wouldn't be happy for that? Um, but then, you know, you get to draft day and then now you start to see, you know, uh, guys go off the board that you're like, oh, well, I played against him. I'm way better than him. Like, then you go through it another emotion, you know? So when um when when that was happening, you know, I was at uh, – I was at a Hooters in Wayne. Oh, wow. Okay. And it was like, you know, I had a uh, had a, a group of people with me and we're all just hanging out, you know, just watching the draft. Um, and then like like I said, like I seen, you know, a bunch of people just kind of going in. Hold on. Cat. Okay. <laughs> yeah, annoying right now. But um he uh so I'm I'm there and then oh Mally, get down, get down. I'm talking right now. <laughs> oh, come on, sir. Uh How about that. Um, but yeah, so I'm at, uh, I'm at Hooters. I got a bunch of people with me and then I'm seeing people go off the board that I played with, you know, in all-star games and, you know, during, you know, the big right. 10 season. Um, and I'm seeing them going off the board. So now I'm going through another emotion and, um, I end up just leaving. So I leave, like, I want to say like mid second round, wow. because that's when, you know, uh, when I got drafted, it was, you know, the first three rounds was on the first day. And then, you know, the rest of them was on the second day. Now they make a whole kind of ordeal about the first round and then it's, you know, kind of spread out. Um, but yeah, like I said, so I left after the, the like mid second round. Oh, you should have you know, stayed there. <laughs> I, well, I mean, I, I mean, hindsight, you know, I, I didn't know, you know, so um, I'm like, yeah, I want to get out of here. So I told everybody yeah. I'm leaving yeah. and uh, ended up leaving. And, I'm, and, and like I said, like it was the third round. So it was later on at, at night now. So maybe it's like 11, 30, 12 o'clock, maybe somewhere around there. Um, so nobody's really watching it at right. this point. So, you know, I'm driving home. Um, I'm, so I, I think I'm on route three at this time. Yeah. And um, headed home and then I get a call around, it, it had, to, it had to be like 12, 12 or 12, 12, 30, somewhere around there. And uh, it was, um, Coach Waffle, Mike Waffle, he was the, he was the D line coach for the Giants at the time, and then he ended up going to Oakland. But he was the only it was only two uh, I I think private workouts that I had. The Giants was one of them, and I think Minnesota might have been one. I, I think. Oh, wow. Um. So I I didn't know where they were gonna go or where they were gonna pick me. But then, like I said, at twelve thirty, I get a call and um, it's him, and he was like, "Hey, uh, Jay, how do you feel about staying home?" I'm like. Are you playing on my phone? Who is this? Like, who, 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 like, and he was like, "No, this is this is Coach Waffle. Um, you're gonna be a giant. We're gonna take you in the third round." Immediately was told my because I was driving with you know somebody else at the time. I was like, "Pull over, pull over, pull over," because now I'm going through another emotion. It's yeah. super high, and I'm just like, "I need something to do. I gotta do something. I gotta do." Something. So pulled over. I'm like, "Yes, I just got drafted. This and that." Because then I then I got the actual call 
of, you know, with the Maras and everybody else standing there was telling me, you know, uh, you know, we're going to take you, you know, third round, 81st pick. And then I see my name scroll by on the bottom and I'm, you know, crazy excited. So then now I'm like, I got to go to my grandmother's house. So now I shoot down to my grandmother's house. Uh, at the time, you know, we lived on a dead end street uh, in Orange, dead end street on Orange. I, as soon as we got to the, to the block, started beeping the horn, woke up everybody on the street. Oh. I'm just in the middle of the street. <laughs> I just got drafted, Mom, come outside, I just got drafted. Oh. So um, now everybody's up and then they're like, oh, congratulations and that. So it was it was a roller coaster ride. Roller coaster ride, but it was great though. I had a good time. What a great draft story right there. That's a classic <laughs> draft story right there. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> awesome. Wow. When you were a rookie, did, did did your teammates pull any funny pranks on you? Yes, they did. <laughs> I mean, but it's it's the thing that you have to go through through, you know, being a rookie, you know. So I had to carry all of the equipment. And at that time, we had a lot of defense alignment. And me being, you know, one of the draft picks, you know, you have to do more than the, the you know, the free agents and stuff like that. So I'm carrying all the stuff. Uh, one time they, you know, we were leaving camp. And uh, this was like the last day of camp. They took all of my clothes, threw them in the cold pool. Oh my. Then before that, they dumped me in the cold pool. So now I don't have any clothes to go home in. I ended up just going home in my, in my equipment. That's what I ended up doing. Kept my pants on, kept my workout shirt on, drove home. Now, mind you, we, had, we were at Albany at the time. So this was a two-hour drive in, you know, soaking wet clothes. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> It was fun. It was fun. Good time. <laughs> All right. So now, once you get drafted, come to the Giants uh, with this loaded roster. You guys had a complete team the first year. Obviously, you guys won the Super Bowl. But when you go into this uh, locker room, you see players like Eli Manning, Classical Burst, Ahmad Bradshaw, Brandon Jacob, uh, Aaron Ross, Corey Webster, Derek Ward. Go. I can go down a list here, man. What was it like? What was that like for you? Um, I just, you know, I just kind of wanted to get there and, and have a role on yeah. the team because I knew we, I knew we were loaded. So I'm just like, I just want to be, you know, uh, needed in a, in a space, you know, and wherever that fit, I was, I was going to do it because like I said, I knew we were loaded, you know, with straight OC, we had Kiwi, we had, Tom, you know, yeah, we had, you know, uh, Barry Cofield, Fred Robbins. <laughs> so that D line was loaded, loaded. So I'm just like, I just want to fit somewhere to where they need me at. And, um, you know, luckily for me, like our, my whole draft class, we all played a, a role in that whole, you know, process of winning the, winning the Super Bowl. Um, so I, yeah, like I said, I just wanted, I was, one, I was, I was starstruck at first, you know, because when I was, when I was super young, uh, we went to a Nets game mm. and um, I took a picture with Strahan. Oh. This might've been, this might've been when I was like, I had to be in, I had to be in middle school at the time. So I had to be like 12, 13, maybe somewhere around there. Took a picture with Stray, didn't know who he was, but I was just like, they were like, oh, that's Michael Stray and this and that. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's take a picture. Took a picture. And then when I got there, bought him the picture because I still had it. I still had the picture. And I was like, look how old you are. Look how, <laughs> look how old you are. You know, so I was kind of starstruck at, the, at wow. that time. But then, you know, they, they actually ended up being great guys. So, I mean, just to hang out with them guys was just awesome. Mm, that's crazy. <laughs> How did it feel to sack Tom Brady in the Super Bowl? Well, <laughs> okay, so, I mean, so here's the thing, right? So when I first sacked him in the Super Bowl, I didn't know it was a sack. Because Brady is such an amazing quarterback, like at that position and under Belichick, like he knew that not saying that he's not, you know, great in Tampa Bay, but under Belichick, I mean, like that, that, that offense was kind of molded for him. So he, you know, at that time he was completing passes. He, he could have completed passes with his eyes closed. I mean, if it was, I mean, me looking at him and how, you know, efficient he was, uh, he could have did it with his eyes closed. So, um, when, I, when it happened, I didn't know it was a sack. So um, the only time when I did know it was a sack is when, because if you look at the picture, right, the ball's caught on my head. So I just, yeah. I, thought I just had, yeah, I thought I just got a good shot on him. Because again, like I say, he was getting the ball off. So when he, when he reared back this way, 
and the ball was coming out. I thought it, I thought it left his hand. So I just got up and I looked downfield to see where it went because I knew Moss was out there. So anytime you got Randy Moss out there, it's just like, good luck, you know? I mean, we put, we played him well, but I mean, he didn't get off, but I mean, because we had a great front four, so we had pressure. But um, I looked downfield to see if he did catch it or not. It wasn't until Stray came up to me, and you can watch it on, I mean, you can watch it on uh, like the TV copy. Yeah. Stray comes up to me, and he was like, Jay, good sack. And I look back, and I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> So then now, and you know, it's crazy because like, usually I always have like a sack celebration. I, and this is how, you know, I didn't know it was a sack because I couldn't do anything. Right. I was kind of just like in the moment and I didn't know what happened. But I mean, one of the, I mean, I, I can't say one of the best, the best sack of my football career, period, period. Wow. Yeah. 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 So speaking of that Super Bowl, let's uh, take us through that experience because uh, obviously uh, you guys obviously had the offense with Amani Toomer in there too, Jeremy Shockey. Um, so what was the message that Tom Coughlin gave you that season? Uh, and obviously it's hard, it's always hard to win the championship in all sports, but what was that one particular message that Tom Coughlin said to you guys? And what, what, what did you guys do as a defense collectively uh, to maintain that, to maintain that composure during the season and to the Super Bowl run? Well, with Tom, um, it was basically, it's us against them. I mean, because everybody had us out anyway. You know, uh, even going into the even, even going into the playoffs, it was just more so like, oh, they'll be done first round. You know, I mean, we didn't have social media at the time, uh, but I mean, just the media outlets, it's like, oh, well, they'll be done, you know, in the first round. And then now, you know, kind of Tom was just like, you know, it's it's us against everyone. Like, if you're not in this locker room, then it's 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 pretty much us against all of them. So um, that's the that's the mindset that we had going into the playoffs. Um, and I mean, it kind of worked out, but. Our defensive line, like we knew uh, going into going into the playoffs that we were going to make a run just because we started to gel around that time. So, I mean, we were all, you know, good, but it wasn't until like around, I want to say, I want to say it was it, when we played the Patriots, the, you know, our, we had we had them the last game of the regular season. Right, yeah. Yeah, last game of the regular season, and we were we were moving, and I mean, like we were really starting to fill it out. And wow. then now, you know, after that game happened, uh, Stray and Osi again, they were like, you know, if we see him again, we're gonna kill him. We're, if we see him again, we're we're gonna beat him. And um, I, you know, me, and I'm like that. I mean, I'm like they're they're undefeated. This is the mindset that I got right now. I'm just like, oh well. They're, they're, you know, 18. Well, no, they were, I forget what they were at the time. 15 I think it was 17 and 0. 17 and 0 at the time. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know, not going into the. Oh, no. 16 and 0, I think. 16 and 0, yeah, 16 yeah. and 0. And then I'm like, ah. Oh. But then um, once we got to Dallas, yeah. we beat them. I'm like, you oh. know what? I think we might be right because now we're clicking on all cylinders at this point. I'm just like, come on, there's no way we could lose now. You know, and that's the, the you know, kind of how we took it the whole way going through. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to a kid trying to make it to the NFL? Hmm. Uh, keep your head down and work because, I mean, it's 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 tough to get to the NFL, you know, and uh, everything has to align. But you have to do your part to make sure those when those lines, those stars do align you're ready to go because it's, it's tough getting there. Like, I mean, like it's the little things that people don't see off the field that, that, you know, makes you a great player. So you have to work harder than pretty much everybody in your position on, in high school, college and in the pros, you know? So I would say just keep your head down, work hard and work harder than pretty much everyone. That, I mean, it, like I said, it's, it's, not a, it's not an easy task to get there. But I mean, if you work hard and, you know, like I said, if you, if you, when opportunity comes, you're ready for that opportunity, yeah. just go out there and play. That's a good question. And um, yeah, so speaking of, uh, Jay, I, I got to tell you this, uh, I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan, so. I, I mean, like, I should, be, I should say sorry to you because, I mean, y'all had like, what, the, I mean, the early 90s? Yeah. The 90s is when y'all was good? I yeah. mean, we, yeah. you know. Uh, that's, I, I don't know why, but are you from Dallas? No, no, no. I, I'm from Jersey. My father brought me up as a Cowboy fan, so. Yikes. Okay, so I mean, I, I guess, yeah, it's in the family, so that makes sense. 
Yeah, so I want to ask you, though, take us to the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. This is where Eli Manning went to work, uh, one of the best quarterbacks, in my opinion. Um, so, but take us through when you guys saw as a defense, when he threw the ball to David Tyree, when he made that amazing catch. Uh, everybody knows that. And then uh, that set up to the game-winning touchdowns of Classical Burrs. But just take us through that fourth quarter. With how you guys were uh, sitting on, on the edge of their feet. Yeah. Um, so – I think at that moment, we were like the defensive line. I think we had maybe about six or seven sacks at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so we were playing so well. I'm on, I'm literally on the sideline telling in, in that David Tyree, in that whole thing, right? That whole drive that we were, that he was doing. I was like, go down, go <laughs> down. Because if you go down, we can get back out there and then maybe we'll give us a better opportunity to win the game. So uh, one, no one never seen Eli scramble. Like, I mean, it's just, you know, it's not a thing, you know? It's kind of like seeing a unicorn. <laughs> so, yeah, because, I mean, Eli's, I mean, he he wants to think he can run, but Eli was slow. Uh. <laughs> I mean, he was super slow. So, uh, you know, when that play was happening, and uh, I seen everything just kind of claps on him, and I'm like, oh, Eli, just go down. Go down. Because if you go down, we can get out there. And this is, this is what I was thinking. And then I seen Eli get out of it. I was like, what is happening? So then now I'm looking at Eli, but then I look down the field and Dave's just like running in the middle of the field, kind of just by himself. Mm. I'm like, you, but everybody knows you don't throw in the middle of the field. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's just dangerous, you know? But then uh, I see him and he's like wide open. I'm like, is Eli going to do it? And I'm looking and he did it. And it came out pretty wobbly. And I'm just like, oh no, this is just not oh, good. God. Like it was just, oh, I, I'm telling you, my heart was in my stomach. I'm just like, Dave. And then, mind you, Dave had a terrible week that week. Terrible week. Hmm. Like, we used to say, like, you know, during practice, beat him up ball, right? And that just means, like, you, you catch it and the ball's hitting you everywhere else but in your hands. That was Dave that whole week. Wow. And we're just like, oh, no, this could be bad. <laughs> this could be bad. And then to for Dave to come up, with the most spectacular catch I've yeah. ever seen in my life. I was like, yeah, we're going to win. We're going to win. It's, 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 I mean, it's in the, it's everything, the stars align. It's in the books. Like we're going to win this game. And I knew after that play, nothing could change my mind. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. How was your Super Bowl parade? Mm. Oh, that was epic. Epic. Because I mean, we, I, I don't know. I think we got out there at like 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock in the morning. And then just to see, it had to be over a million people there, somewhere around that. It was a lot of people. And just seeing all of those people out there celebrating us and, uh, you know, we're able to interact with them and just, you know, give them high fives and stuff like that and just enjoy the whole experience of winning the Super Bowl. I think that's when it actually hit me that we did win, you know, because the Super Bowl is, for me, at the time, you know, me being a rookie, it was, to me, it was just like any bowl game because I, you know, I, I don't know what the Super Bowl was. I mean, I knew what it was, but I mean, to me, playing in like a bowl game, like the Orange Bowl or Cotton Bowl, whatever, you know, that was kind of the same experience for me. It was just like a game that was just kind of a blown up game. And it was like, all right, cool. But it wasn't until I got to the parade is when it was just like, oh, wow, that's what we did. You know, we brought everybody together, and then now we can celebrate this all together. So it was great, man. Great. That parade was amazing. Wow. Yeah, so obviously now uh, after winning that Super Bowl and playing for the Giants, and also you had some experiences with different teams like the Raiders, the Seahawks, and uh, you play in a different league. But what was it, what was it like uh, being a Super Bowl champion, and what was it like just experiencing different cultures and bringing that winning mentality to these other teams that you played for? I mean, and and no no shade to the Raiders, but I mean at that time, uh, Al Davis was kind of running the team. He his his ship was a lot different than how you know uh, the Mares ran theirs. Yeah, uh, it was just more. It it felt more like a job there than it did <laughs> when I was with the Giants. When, the, when I was with the Giants, it was just kind of like uh, we're gonna make y'all happy. You, if you guys are happy, then you know you you go out there and you play well. Uh, the Raiders are more so like, this is your job. <laughs> Do your job and then go home wow, kind of wow. space. So it was different, you know, just because, I mean, I don't know. I, well, who, who was on my team? Richard Seymour was on my team at okay. that time. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know. It, was Justin Tuck there? 
Huh? Was Justin Tuck there? No, Tuck didn't get there until I left. So I okay. I got there in 2010, no, 2011. And then they released me. And I think Tuck came right after that or 2012. Oh. No, he came 2012 because they won the Super Bowl then. Yeah. 11. They won it in 11. Yeah, against the Patriots. Yeah. Yes. So he came in 12. Uh, but before that, it was just like, man, this is it's different. It's different. So you couldn't really bring, you know, I couldn't really bring that Giants energy with me yeah. because yeah. they were kind of in a whole different space. And it was it was tough. It was tough. And then I was coming off of an injury at that time, too. So, I mean, my my mind wasn't even in it all the way. So it was just, it was tough, tough. What was it like playing for Seattle? Because Seattle's a much different team than Oakland because Seattle's more of a family team like the Giants. Yeah, and like the Giants. And I had a, gr a great time there. Great time there. Pete Carroll, great coach. It was the first time I ever seen, like, can't be ran. Like, how it, it made football fun again for me, you know, because I went through that whole experience with the, yeah. with the Raiders when it was kind of like, this is your job, do your job, you know? And then I get to the Seattle and I was just like, oh, I love it here. I love it here. Like if I could, if I could stay here, it was like those two, two, those two spots for me yeah. was just like, oh, if I could stay here, then I'll, I'll be great. You know, it, it just sucked at that time. It was a lockout year. And then, uh, you know, other things played into it. You know, that's when you get the politics of football <laughs> and um, that kind of played into it. But I mean, oh, great experience. Nothing bad to say about Seattle. So yeah, it was great out there. What do you ever want? Would you ever want to be a head coach in college or in the NFL? <laughs> wow, I uh, go, mm, no, I it's the hours are too long. The hours are too long. Like it's you know you if if we in so when I was with the Giants or when I was playing professional, uh, we would be going home at around seven somewhere around there. And that's a long day, you know, because you get in there around, you know, 645 and then you're leaving at, you know, about 645, 7 o'clock. It's a 12 hour shift, you know, but the coaches are there later than us. Like there have been times that, you know, my defensive line coach, uh, Coach Waffle would just stay there. He would just stay at the facilities and sleep there just because it would be easier for him to drive all the way home and then come back. It would be easier for him to set up an air mattress and then be there when he get back, you know? You get food there, you can take showers, and you, you're good. So I just don't know if I would have the time or the attention span to be a head coach anywhere because then now you're, you know, you have to monitor all of your coaches, and then if y'all lose, then everything's on you. Like, it's not on the – it's not on the D coordinator. It's not on the offensive coordinator. Everybody's looking at you. That's it. Right. It's like, oh, you lost this team. Like – even though you have a whole 11, 22 guys out there playing, you lost the team. You know, you lost this game. So I don't know if I could do all of that. No, not my thing. Not my thing. <laughs> so looking looking back at your career now, uh, overcoming a lot of adversity, like you said, it started from the bottom. Now you're here, like Drake says. And um, <laughs> but, but um, so what was uh, what's it like now? Sharing your story, what you've been through, and being winning a Super Bowl with the Giants, being from Jersey. And now sharing this, helping out young the other kids and the, the younger players that want to be that want to play defensive line also like you. Yeah, um, it's it's great. Uh, just because um, I I didn't have it when I was growing up. It was all kind of just a learned experience. I was kind of just thrown into the fire, and it's just like Jay, figure it out, you know. Yeah. And um, for me now to you know come back and be able to give you know uh, generations of players. This experience, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's amazing, you know, because now I'm teaching them everything that I learned, yeah. not only on the field, but off the field. And um, to see them kind of just kind of blossom into something else. I mean, you can't, I, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Oh. When did, when did you know you were, you were good enough to make it to the NFL? Let's see. It was my end. So the end of my sophomore year, going into my junior year, things started to click for me. So it was like I went from, uh, because I was a smaller defensive tackle at the time. Like I played at, when I, so when I first stepped on the field as a freshman, 
Uh, I was a 265 pound defensive tackle. And in the Big Ten, that's just, it just doesn't work like that, especially at that time because they ran the ball a lot. Um, so at that time, I was not that great in my eyes. My sophomore year going into my junior year, I was 285 then. And I think I had the best uh, like off season that I, I ever thought that I had. So going into my junior year, it was, I felt really good about that season. And then that season I ended up having nine sacks as a, as, at the three technique position. So after that, I was just like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm good now. I'm going somewhere. Somebody's going to pick me up. Hmm. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So looking, all right. So now what are you most looking forward to? Obviously you're going to be watching the, this season, upcoming season last year, we had no fans in the stands, but now we're going to see some fans in the stands or maybe full, full fans, but what's right. your, what, are you, what are you most looking forward to this, to this season and especially college football coming back this week and NFL coming back next month? Well, I'm for the Giants, I'm, I'm looking for to see what that defensive line is going to turn into. Um, I'm, I'm more so, you know, I'm a, I'm old school. So I, for me in my head, I build teams outside, you know, inside out, you know, so it's offensive line, defensive line, and then whatever else you can put around them. Um, last year, you know, we had ups and downs, but again, like we got a new coach and actually I love coach judge for this team. Yeah. Uh, he just, he gives me uh Tom Coughlin vibes, which is, which is great. Cause I thought TC was great, you know? Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to see how this defensive line starts to gel. Um, they brought in a kid from Georgia, which um, he reminds me a lot of, of OC, and not in the sense of like uh, height and weight size, but more so how he bends the edge and that get off that he has. Um, so if he's able to kind of maximize that on his rookie year, I know it's probably a lot to ask for, but um, I think that's what the Giants were missing last year. Um, not to take anything away from uh, Williams, Big Cat, right? Not yeah. to Nick again. He was a great, great defensive end. Um, but we needed an edge rusher, you yeah. know, we need somebody that can actually just I, I, not spend because I don't really like special. I don't like to use that word specialty players uh, because I'm pretty sure he can do more than just, you know, rush the edge. But if he can and he can give you that that, uh, you know, double digit sack years consistently. I think that's that's what I'm looking for. I want to see that defensive line just kind of come together hmm. and be the, the force of the team, because I mean, our, all the Giants teams that I've ever watched, you know, before uh, before me, right? We were all kind of defensive line or yeah. defensive oriented before anything. You know, the offense was just more so like, just don't mess up, don't mess up, and then we'll win the game. You yeah. know, because we'll we'll be okay with winning a game, you know, six to three, like that. <laughs> that's fine, you know. But we have all of the. We always had talent on the defensive side. Period. Whether it was that linebacker defensive line, we were always loaded. You know, so I'm hoping that they get back to that. And um, if they can do that, I think that'll be great this year. Mm. Yeah. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl this year? Come on. I'm, I'm always, I'm, I'm always going to say the Giants. Yeah. <laughs> even though, I mean, even though it's always a long shot, but I mean, like, I, like it, the Giants always give me a vibe of once a Giant, always a Giant. So <laughs> when, when they win, it, it definitely feels like you're still winning. So I'm always going to shoot for them to win the Super Bowl, hands down, always. They got to get through my Cowboys first. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, uh, Zeke, Zeke's not playing like Zeke. After he got paid, he's, you know, he's tiptoeing. And then uh, with Dak, I mean, Dak's, Dak's okay. Dak's okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I'm gonna, but, you know. You know what? But they did get the guy that I wanted, um, Parsons. Like Parsons, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my guy, man. Like, I – I watched him like all the way through Penn State mm -hmm. and uh, just seeing him play. Oh, man, he is going to be crazy good. He reminds me of uh, Bobby Wagner a little bit. Right, exactly. And then now, I don't know. I don't know. I think Sean Lee retired this year. Yeah, he did. But again, like, yeah, he did. But I mean, like, if he's still around to learn under that guy, I mean, because, you know, I played with Sean when, you know, uh, when yeah, Penn State, yeah. 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 And I mean, when I say smart, kid was super smart. So he can teach him, you know, the the mental side of, of playing football and not only being physical, because, I mean, everybody's going to be physically gifted there. It's, you know, what what makes the, the what makes you great is, you know, the yeah. mental aspect of it. So, I mean, if he's down there and he can learn under Sean, 
or Sean can give him, you know, just some ins and outs of how to maneuver through the NFL. Oh man, he's going to be great. He's going to be great. So I, I, I think that is a, you know, a bright spot on that Dallas, Dallas defense. Yeah, so, they do have great linebackers. Yeah, uh, we do. We have a, I think we have the, one of the, best. Crazy, yeah. Crazy, yeah. yeah, crazy. We got Jalen Smith, Jabril Cox, uh, oh, Liam Le- Le- Renderish. What's, what's the, what's the kid, Van? What's, no. Renderish, Renderish. yeah, he's good. <laughs> the Wolf like Hunter, him. the Wolf, we call him the Wolf Hunter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, but the last few things here before we let you go, uh, I want to ask you about the guy behind you, Tom Brady, the one yeah. who's packed. And man, this guy, his longevity, man, I can't, I don't know how he does it. Uh, now he's going into his, what, 18th year now or 20? I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's trying to get his eighth Super Bowl ring. It's insane. Uh, insane. So, so what, what, do you, what was it like just playing against him and just, just seeing him go about his business? He's not, he's, he's a, to be honest, he's a family person, and all he all he want, wants to win. He's focused on winning, um, and he wants to do one thing: win, win, win. So, what was it like just playing against that type of guy, uh, and and knowing that he's focused on one thing? Well, like I like I said before, like I, I mean, there's not many. There, there'll never be another Tom Brady, like mm-hmm. period, point blank. Like you'll never see a guy win seven Super Bowls. But just playing against him, like I said, it was you know under that Belichick kind of offense to see him operate was is just it's insane like how quick he can get the ball off like they usually give defense alignment right 2.5 seconds to get to the quarterback right Right. you get there in 2.5 seconds usually it's a sack or hurry he was getting the ball off and I had it had to be like a second something like that so just to think like a second it's maybe two blinks of an eye something like that and he's already in his, he's already back, ready to go, balls off. Oh. And it's, it, so just to see how he operated through that or took control of the, the, the whole offense was just insane, man. Insane. I, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that I got a chance to play against him. Because again, like I said, nobody, there's not a lot of people that can say that. But I mean, no, nah, he was a great quarterback. Still is oh, a great quarterback. Did you Still ever, good. did you ever like uh, time yourself? Uh, um, how many seconds did it take you to get, to get to him during the Super Bowl? Never, never timed it, but I mean, it was, I think after I beat my guy, it had, because I beat my guy clean, I beat him clean, and you know, you never really beat your guy clean, no. like it's usually a fight in between that, but I beat him clean, so I would say it had to at 1.5 somewhere, but he had to get the ball downfield though, so I think that's what helped me out, because you got to wait till the play develops when it, you know, because a lot of uh, Belichick's offense was more kind of five yard, get rid of the ball, let your wide receivers get the yards after the catch. But in this particular time, uh, you know, it's fourth down, they're down, so they got to get downfield. And you got Randy Moss. <laughs> so anytime you have Randy Moss, he puts that hand up, you know, get it out there, you know? So you still have to wait for the play to, to develop, you know, because now you got to clear the safeties, right? You got to clear the corner, then clear the safety. I mean, that, that takes a little bit more time. So I probably could have got there in two seconds, but it probably took three seconds for, you know, the play to develop. Wow. Yeah, yeah. so the last two things here before we, we let you go. Um, our team is part of this foundation. It's called the Hugh Jackson Foundation. He's a mm-hmm. former NFL coach. He's now the offensive coordinator at Tennessee State with Eddie George. Um, so we're trying to help him prevent human trafficking, making sure the community stays safe, the kids stay safe because it's still horrible out, horrible out there. So I'll send you the foundation so you can, so you can uh, go check it out. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah. And, la- and the last thing here, uh, would, you, would you like to say anything to all the nurses, doctors, and all the um, essential workers right now? Yeah. Um, just keep fighting that good fight, man. Uh, it's a it's a crazy time that we're living in, you know, with this whole pandemic thing going on. So, um, I mean, and they're, you know, they're the superheroes right now. Yeah. They're taking care of all the, you know, the people that, that are getting sick or, you know, and they have to see a lot of deaths and things like that so i mean that can probably play a toll on them so um i mean yeah just keep fighting and hopefully this thing turns around pretty soon yeah well said and there it is that wraps up episode 884 with super bowl champ jay alford from the new york football giants now he coaches young kids on the d line and uh go follow him on all social media formats man uh, this has been an honor thank you for joining us uh yeah and uh, obviously we're gonna uh, we want to have you back on the show at some point so you can meet the full team. And we got to link up, man, since we're in Jersey. So 
Uh, yeah, just let me know. I mean, you got my information. Uh, yeah. Just hit, just hit me up. I mean, especially like right now, because I, I was gonna go down to uh, uh, Great Adventures for Fright Fest. I wanted yeah. to do that because I know oh. that's coming up pretty soon. So I might do that. So I mean, if I'm in town, then I'll give you, I'll give you a call. All right. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you again for coming on the show and uh, safety. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Dan.